Hello everyone, welcome to Exemplar Physics where we study concepts in a just different way. So in this video, we are going to study about motion and this is going to be the part two of the series. If you haven't watched the part one, I'll put the link in the end screen as well as in the description section. You can watch it after watching this. Before we, we go further, I would like to thank each one of you from the bottom of my heart for encouraging this channel, helping it to grow. So keep supporting this channel and be back with much more content. In the previous video, we have studied about examples of motion, types of motion, and then we understood why studying about the motion is important. Then we have tried to understand how to describe motion, whether the body is at rest or motion, how to understand it, what is reference frame, what is reference point. And in this video, we are going to understand the basic difference between the distance and displacement. Then we'll do two simple questions. And at the end, there will be a homework question for you for answer to which you have to write in the comment section. So to understand the basic difference between distance and displacement, let's take the most basic type of motion that is motion along a straight line. The motion along a straight line is also called as rectilinear motion. I'm sure you must have studied about rectilinear motion in your lower classes. So let us go into the example. So here what are we doing is we are considering the motion of a boy moving along a straight path. The boy starts from the starts his journey from point O, which is treated as a reference point. Let A, B, and C represent the position of the boy at different instants. At first, the boy moves through C and B, then reaches A. Then he moves back along the same path and reaches C through B. So it's a motion along a straight line. Now the question is, how much the boy has moved? What is distance? The boy has started his journey from O. So this is going to be the initial position. So we are going to talk about initial position and the final position, which is the C final position many times in our discussion. So these are the most important positions initial and final. So boy has started from O, gone to A, and then reached C. Now, what is the total path traveled by the boy? Total path traveled, we can write it as O to A, then from A to C. So OA plus AC. So how much is the length OA? So you have to measure the distance between O to A and it is 60 kilometers and from A to C, so A to C from here till this final position. So how to measure that distance? You can just subtract, subtract the nearer distance from the farther distance that is six, 25 from 60 kilometers. So what is the path length? 60 plus 60 minus 25. It's going to be 60 minus 20 is 40, 35. Hence, the total path traveled by the body is equal to 95 kilometers. Now, this length of path traveled that is the path length is called as distance. So what is distance? Distance is the length of actual path traveled. So I'll write it here with another color. Distance is the length of path 
traveled by a body or a person okay that is called as distance now how the body has traveled from o to a then to b then the next one is the displacement displacement talks about the change in position displacement talks about change in position to know the change in position you should know the initial and final position so to find the displacement what are we going to do is we are going to draw a straight line from initial position to final position and the length of this path is called as displacement so straight line is going to be the shortest path between distance and displacement so the shortest path between the initial and final position so how much is the shortest path between initial and final position and that is equal to ac so how much is the length ac length ac is 25 kilometers now just look at the dist magnitude of the distance 95 kilometers and also the magnitude of the displacement 25 kilometers in this example which one is greater obviously the distance is greater from this we can learn that distance is going to be greater than displacement and in one case both can be equal what is that case that condition is when the body moves straight goes forward and doesn't return back in such case the displacement as well as distance are going to be the same so i hope you have understood the difference between the distance and displacement but for your convenience i have written the differences between distance and displacement in tabular form so let us go through each one by one first of all distance distance is the length of the path traced or traveled by a body in motion if you are noting something from the video you can pause the video at any time and note it down next it's a scalar quantity what is a scalar quantity scalar quantity is a quantity which has only magnitude but no direction examples for scalar quantities are or fundamental physical quantities length mass time electric current amount of substance etc so if you don't know what is scalar quantity i would suggest you to go to the go to the playlist named vector link to which will be given in the end screen as well as in the description section that will enhance your knowledge about the scalars and vectors if the body has moved from this position that means we must have undergone some motion and the length of that path traveled by the body can not be zero hence the distance can never be zero if the body has undergone some motion and the si unit for the distance is meters symbol m next let us look at the displacement displacement is defined as the shortest distance between the initial position and final position and how do we get the shortest path just by connecting joining the initial position with the final position with the help of a straight line it may not be the actual path traversed by the body that's very very important point so displacement suppose this is the initial position a and this is the final position b and the body has reached a b along this path okay so here in displacement path is not important what are we going to do is we are just simply going to join a with b whether the actual path is possible or not so this length of this straight line 
is going to be called as the magnitude of the displacement and next displacement has also direction its direction is always from initial position to final position so that is indicated by an arrow so by this you understand that displacement is a vector quantity that is it has both magnitude and direction what is the direction direction is from initial position to final position next displacement of the body can be positive zero or negative let me explain it with just a simple example over here suppose this is the starting point of the motion say a and the body is moving in this direction and this is the final let's say this is the final position b then a to b the displacement is going to be positive suppose the body again from b reaches back to a so the body has moved from a to b then again reached a now what happens here here the initial position and final position are going to be the same so here the final position and the initial position are going to be the same then what is displacement displacement is going to be zero so displacement can also be zero whereas the distance is always positive cannot be zero if the body has moved and at the end the last example how can the displacement be negative so we have understood that displacement is the change in position right we have understood the displacement is the change in position and the shortest path between the initial and final position so here we have to consider some directions so if you are well known with the cartesian coordinate system suppose if i take all the directions to the right of the point a as positive this is my notation if you want you can take the reverse and if i take all the directions to the right of a as positive then what happens to that all the direction to the left towards the left of a they all are going to be negative yeah. hence it's very important tool and very interest hence it very simple tool to understand in which direction the body is moving so if the body moves towards b then the displacement will be displacement will be positive if the body moves towards c or in the direction towards c then the displacement is going to be negative it's very simple if the final position is in the direction of b displacement is positive if the final position is in the direction of c then the displacement is negative so your direction is important hence the displacement of the body can be positive zero or negative now si unit si unit of displacement is same as the distance what are we measuring we are measuring the distance that is the length of the shortest path hence the si unit is meter here also so i hope that uh, this has cleared the concept and if has done so let's do some questions question number 1 question number 1 asks an object has moved through a distance can it have zero displacement if yes support your answer with the example so i have already told you the situation when we are going to have zero displacement so the situation is if the i'll write it here if the initial position and final position if initial position and final position are same then we are going to have zero displacement and for this i have taken an example for you so let us take this ray circuit we have so here all the vehicles all the cars are starting from the same point 
and they are reaching the same point right in a circuit what happens the initial point and the final point both are same so can you tell me how much is the displacement the displacement is zero so that's so the our answer is going to be yes an object which has moved through a distance can have zero displacement example here we have taken cars racing in a race circuit now let's go to the next question in the next question a farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of side 10 meters in 40 seconds what will be the magnitude of the displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds from his initial position okay so let's understand this question first let us write the given so here is the here is our square field so the square field a b c d you can see so let us write the given first so what do we have we have a square of side n meters okay you know the square has all the sides are equal now time taken to move along the boundary for the farmer is given as 40 seconds so one complete round in 40 seconds then we have to find out the displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds so where is the farmer going first we have to find out where the farmer is going to be at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds then from initial position you have to draw a straight line towards the final position and the length of that straight line is our answer that is the displacement of the farmer so uh, here uh, for you just to give, to give you a further knowledge ac is what the line joining the opposite corners of a quadrilateral square of course square is a special form of quadrilateral where all sides are equal is called as diagonal so ac is a diagonal and also bd is also diagonal a quadrilateral has two diagonals ac and bd here in this case Now see here you can see the farmer farmer's initial position is a so the farmer is starting his journey from the initial position so we will mark the initial position so initial position this is the initial position of the farmer a now what happens total number of seconds in 2 minutes 20 seconds so 1 minute implies 10, 60 seconds so 2 minutes is 2 into 60 that is 120 plus 20 seconds so total it's going to be 140 seconds next so how many rounds does the farmer makes so how to get a total number of seconds is 140 and for one round how, many, how much time does he take? He takes 40 seconds. So 140 by 40 is going to be 3.5 rounds. So what do you mean by 3.5? 3.5 implies 3 complete rounds and 1 half round. So at the end of the 3.5 rounds, the farmer is going to reach the point C. So I'm going to mark the point C here. So this is our final position. So hence, initial position is A, final position is C. Now the length AC is going to be the displacement. So the diagonal AC, we have to find the length. So if you know Pythagoras theorem, okay, so the length of the diagonal is given as, you can see there's a triangle, right? You can see there's a triangle. Triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. Why is it right angle triangle? Because it's a part of a square. Hence, AC is the diagonal, so which is also the displacement. How to get AC is equal to AB square plus BC square. How much is AB? AB is 10 meters. All the sides of a square are equal. BC 10 meters. So we are going to have ac is equal to under root of 10 square plus 10 square you can take 10 square as common here so what are we left with we are left with 1 plus 1 so what is 10 square 
if I take 10 square out, I'll get 10 and 1 plus 1 is 2, which is trapped inside the root. So 10 root 2 meters is the displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds. End of the question. So I hope you have understood it and still, still, if you have any doubts, you always comment section is open. We can write the I'll surely help. Yes, here is the question for you, the homework question. Which of the following is true for displacement? A. It cannot be zero. B. Its magnitude is greater than the distance traveled by the object. So drop the answer in the comment section. If you know, don't know, doesn't matter. If you don't know, I'll surely help. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching it. So please subscribe the channel and share it with your friends and family members we will be soon coming with the part three of the video thanks for watching